the best place for cartoons. This was the slogan that Cartoon Network lived and died by in the 90s. Launching in 1992, Cartoon Network quickly made a name for itself as being the go-to channel for all things animated. Though the network primarily relied on returns of classic cartoons for the first few years, the channel soon began creating their own original shows. These new shows would be completely different from everything else on TV at that time. They weren't clean like Disney, and they were more tolerant of creators than Nickelodeon too. These shows, referred to as Cartoons Cartoons, were all about letting the creators' imaginations run wild. The shows varied from talk show spoofs to horror comedies giving Cartoon Network an animation lineup that was totally unlike anything seen before. Many of these shows are fondly remembered even today and some have left a noticeable mark on the animation industry as a whole. But of all of them, which ones deserve this fate and which should be left to the 90s? I'm Caleb with Wicked Binge and this is Cartoon Network 90s Show's Worst to Best. As per usual, we'll be starting with the worst shows, then work our way up to the best of the best. Kicking things off, we have to give last place to one of the last shows to come out of this era, Mike, Lou, and Og. Premiering in 1999, the show follows the foreign exchange student Mike as she embarks on life on a strange island. The core trio of characters is rounded out by Lou, a 10-year-old princess, and Og, a boy genius. An average episode follows the characters on a random adventure of the week. One episode might show Mike attempting to educate her friends on city life, while another focuses on Og's latest invention. A lot of you watching this right now might be confused as to what this show is. You'd be forgiven as the reason becomes clear once you watch it. In short, the show is pretty boring. It's certainly not horrible, but compared to every other show on this list, it easily draws the shortest straw. The series never quite feels like it takes advantage of its outlandish premise. A show about the inhabitants of a strange island has a lot of potential for fun stories and good comedy, but we unfortunately never see that come to fruition. There are other shows on this list that had far more mundane premises, yet managed to make something great out of them, so it's a tad disappointing to see the same could not be said for this show. The characters are all pretty stock too. Nobody really sticks out, and if it wasn't for the fact that the show was named after them, I don't think we'd even remember them right now. Overall, Mike Lewinog isn't bad, but it's incredibly mundane. When stacked up against the other shows that come out of this time, it only makes sense to put this one in dead last. We can only recommend this one to the most ardent Cartoon Network fans out there, as well as those who carry a sense of nostalgia for it. Up next, we have I Am Weasel. This series follows the exploits of I Am Weasel and his nemesis, I R Baboon. While Weasel is our well-spoken and successful hero, Baboon acts as the dim-witted antagonist who is jealous of Weasel's success. Episodes in the series often revolve around Baboon trying to ruin Weasel's reputation. Of course, rarely does it ever work out, resulting in hijinks for the pair of animals. Now, I Am Weasel certainly isn't bad. We actually enjoy it quite a bit. The art style might not be to everyone's liking, but the animation itself is always lively and colorful. Weasel and Baboon themselves are also a likable pair of main characters, and you enjoy watching their exploits time after time. In short, if you enjoyed Cow and Chicken, then you'll probably enjoy this show. However, that is kind of the problem we have with this series. You see, I Am Weasel began as just another segment of Cow and Chicken until the choice was made to split them off into their own separate shows. This leads to the show feeling, how do we say this, derivative? Again, it isn't bad, but it definitely feels like more of the same from Cow and Chicken. We've praised Cartoon Network's output during this time for how unique every show was and the sheer variety between them, but I Am Weasel is definitely one show we can't say the same about. Still, if you can get past its derivative nature, there is a lot to like about this show. I Am Weasel may not be the most fondly remembered show to come out of this era, but it has etched a relatively nice spot in the network's catalog of cartoon comedies. Since I Am Weasel was in our last spot, it only makes sense for Cow and Chicken to come next. Cow and Chicken tells the story of two siblings, Cow, the sister, and her brother, Chicken. 
They have, for some reason, two human parents and the show follows them and their various adventures. What are the kinds of adventures they go on in a normal episode? You know, the usual stuff. Hanging out with school friends, riding in submarines, encountering the devil, that kind of stuff. Yes, the storylines in Cow and Chicken are often just as oddball as the show's premise itself. For every mundane episode about sibling life, there's another one about them encountering the devil, otherwise known as the Red Guy. Cow and Chicken is often referred to as Cartoon Network's answer to Ren and Stimpy, and after watching a few episodes, you will see why. The humor is all over the place, ranging from slapstick to dark comedy to fourth wall jokes. Anyone can find something to laugh at with this show. You can actually see a lot of elements that would carry over to future Cartoon Network shows in this series. It's hard not to think of something like Billy and Mandy when you watch episodes of this show. With so much being thrown at the wall by one show, of course not everything sticks. However, what does work really works, making for an animated series that's still entertaining some 25 years later. While you aren't likely to find someone who names Cow and Chicken as their all-time favorite Cartoon Network show, these strange siblings have more than earned their place in the channel's Hall of Fame. From being a strong series on its own to influencing countless future ones, it might just be time to give this wacky classic another watch. We now turn our attention to one of the network's most classic shows and characters, Johnny Bravo. Beginning in 1997, the series follows Johnny Bravo, a sunglass-wearing hunk who takes a lot after late Elvis Presley. A typical episode follows him as he attempts to score dates, though he always fails in the end. That setup sounds like it could get repetitive, but the show surprisingly keeps the formula fresh more often than not. While an episode may start with that plotline, things can quickly swerve into an entirely different direction. One minute he might be getting turned down by a woman, and the next he's saving Christmas. He's met Donny Osmond, been kidnapped by aliens, and traveled more or less the entire world. Whatever the premise be, Johnny Bravo always manages to keep things entertaining. And he's a great protagonist. Though he's dumb as can be, you never get irritated by his stupidity, something that's hard to pull off in a main character like this. He's as lovable as he is stupid, and that isn't always easy to do. The humor itself is also sharp and fast-paced. There are a lot of adult jokes present in the series, making a show that was just as entertaining for parents as it was for their children. You have also got to love all the guest stars who appear in this show. I mean really, can you name anyone else on this list who has met both the Scooby-Doo gang and Adam West? We've made a big deal about discussing the impact all of these shows have had, and in those terms, Johnny Bravo might have had some of the biggest effects on animation. Not only did it create another icon for Cartoon Network, but it also launched the careers of cartoonists like Butch Hartman and Seth MacFarlane, the creators of Fairly Odd Parents and Family Guy respectively. With an impact like that, how could we not praise this show? If we had any critiques, it's that the show is rather uneven at times. The creator only was involved with the first and final seasons of the show, giving the series a rather strange feel in terms of direction. However, the show remained entertaining to the end, no matter whose hand was guiding it. Johnny Bravo has definitely earned its place as one of Cartoon Network's classics, and it's a show we love to go back to time after time. Starting off the top five, and my personal favorite, we have Courage the Cowardly Dog. Taking place in the middle of nowhere, Courage follows its title character as he struggles to keep his elderly owner safe from all kinds of creepy beings. Another unique entry in the Cartoon Network canon, Courage stood out as being the channel's first horror cartoon. While later shows would also blend horror with comedy, we feel this series did it better than all the rest combined. Courage has some genuinely scary moments throughout all three of its seasons. You can be honest with us, more than a few of you were scared of this show growing up. Even today, many of the show's villains and twisted moments stick with us. Who could forget good old King Ramses and the Return the Slab? However, horror was only one ingredient in the Courage recipe. The show was just as funny as it was horrifying. 
The show can be genuinely funny when it isn't trying to scare you, and the animation is as lively as the best shows of this era. We especially love the show's use of mixed media. Stop motion animation, CGI, live action, and more formats are used to great effect. It's something that we wish more cartoons did. Courage was a great show because you never knew what you were in for when a new episode was on. You had no idea what new villain would pop up or what would scare you, but you did know that Courage would do whatever needed to be done to keep his family safe. With a feel that's unlike any other Cartoon Network show then or now, we have to place this cowardly dog in our top 5. Next up, the earliest show on our list, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. First airing in 1995, Space Ghost explores the classic Hanna-Barbera superhero as he faces his greatest challenge yet, becoming a late-night talk show host. Space Ghost is more or less what happens when all you have to make a show with is old recycled animation. Each episode sees Space Ghost interview a particular celebrity. One interview focuses on a comedian, the next will be the cast of a classic TV show. Along the way, he gets himself into strange entanglements, usually involving characters like Zorak and Rack. As weird as the show's premise and style was, Space Ghost quickly became the network's very first hit. The show's humor is probably the strangest on this entire list. One episode could have pretty dry humor, mostly relying on the interviews. Another would be wacky and surreal, with the interviews taking the back seat. Either way, the show always knew how to have a good time. And in terms of impact, Space Ghost definitely had a big one. The show proved adult animation had a place on Cartoon Network, directly leading to things like Adult Swim. Really, much of the humor in Adult Swim shows can be traced all the way back to Space Ghost. It's hard not to think of the many shows that block is birth when going back and watching this one. The show even led to more Hanna-Barbera oldies getting a new, more adult second chance. We also have to give this show props for the indelible mark it left on Space Ghost as a character. Just think for a second, when you think of this character, what do you think of? A superhero or a talk show host? Come on, we all know it's the latter. Although Space Ghost is nowadays seen as more of an adult swim program, it had its beginnings on Cartoon Network and it had a huge impact on the entire channel. Not bad for a show made out of reused animation. In third place, we've got to go with Dexter's Laboratory. The first original series to be made from the ground up, the show followed a boy genius Dexter and all the wacky creations he comes up with in his lab. Things usually go awry when Dee Dee, his playful sister, enters the picture. Not only will Dexter spend an episode creating something, but he'll also have to clean up whatever mess Dee Dee or himself are responsible for. Starting in 1996, this show was the first taste of what an original Cartoon Network animated series could be like, and it set the bar pretty high, to say the least. We'd be remiss not to mention the show's creator, Gendy Tartakovsky. Though it isn't quite as action-packed as his later shows, this series does have his fingerprints all over it. The focus on animation over dialogue, giant robot fights, it's all undeniably his style. Dee and Dexter themselves are as enjoyable of protagonists as characters like Tom and Jerry. Their conflicts never cease to entertain week after week, showing just how much this simple formula can be retooled. You also have the equally enjoyable Justice Friends and Dial M for Monkey segments, which complement the main series very well. Though it's the same team doing them, each segment has a different tone than Dexter does. The animation itself is also pleasing to look at and very well crafted. You can thank Dexter's Lab for causing the UPA style craze that swept the animation scene for much of the 2000s. Speaking of impact, Dexter left a huge mark on the network as a whole. Besides launching Gendy's career, the show also put creators like Craig McCracken and Rob Renzetti on the map. These creators, among a few others, have made some of the most impactful cartoons of the last 30 years, and it was this show that gave them that opportunity. In terms of issues we have with the show, we have to say it jumped the shark a little. 
A year after the show ended, it was renewed with a virtually new creative team. While there were some good episodes that come out of this revival, many of them lacked the spirit that made the Gendy season so entertaining. However, even those weaker seasons can't diminish the greatness of the show's earlier episodes, nor the effect the series had on Western animation. While it hasn't gotten the same acclaim as some of Tarkovsky's later works, Dexter's Lab remains a classic in Cartoon Network's library and deserves all the praise for its contributions to animation. Coming in second place is perhaps the most famous show to come out of this period, The Powerpuff Girls. On the off chance you don't already know the premise, when a kind-hearted professor attempted to create the perfect girls gets a secret ingredient added, the Powerpuff Girls are born. Made up of Blossom, Bubbles, and Buttercup, the trio dedicate their lives to keeping the city of Townsville safe. Before bedtime, that is. Out of all the shows we've covered so far, Powerpuff Girls might be the most impactful just because of how recognizable it is. Almost 25 years later, these characters are icons. Merchandise is still made, it's not uncommon to see memes based off the show, and we've gotten several reboots based on the show. In our eyes, the hype is more than justified. All these years later, the show remains entertaining. It's just the right blend of funny and action-packed. The Powerpuff Girls themselves are very enduring protagonists, and they have more than earned their place as cartoon icons. Though they are superheroes, they are often pit against the entire world, giving them an underdog feel. But of course, no superhero cartoon is complete without an awesome rogues gallery. This show has that in spades. From Mojo Jojo to him, the show is filled to the brim with entertaining villains. The show even has some surprisingly well done action sequences, especially for the time. Remember, action cartoons weren't quite a thing when this show premiered, so to see animation with this much fighting and destruction was rather unique. They are also where the show's anime influence is most apparent. In addition, we credit this show for being one of the first western cartoons to take influence from anime, something that would become commonplace in the 2000s. Regarding the show's flaws, the only issue we really have is that it does eventually have a drop-in quality much like Dexter before it. Creator Craig McCracken left the show in its later seasons, leaving a new creative team to try and hold the show together. While these later episodes were definitely better than what Dexter's Lab got, they are still noticeably weaker than the earlier seasons. Even though it didn't go out at its peak, Powerpuff Girls remains one of Cartoon Network's most notable shows well after its end. In a day and age where superheroes dominate our screens, it might be time to give these pint-sized protagonists a rewatch. Finally, we have reached first place, and what else could it be other than Ed, Ed, and Eddie? One of the last shows to come out of this period, Ed, Ed, and Eddie follows its title characters as they do what they do best, trying to scam the kids of the cul-de-sac in an attempt to get their hands on some tasty jawbreakers. In terms of premises, Ed, Ed, and Eddie has the most mundane one out of any of the shows here. There is no giant robots, supervillains, or anything like that. Yet, it's somehow the most enjoyable show out of any on this list. There's something incredibly universal to the adventures of the Eds. They're just kids trying to enjoy the summer, something anybody around that age could relate with. That's not to say this show doesn't get out there, because believe us, it does. Remember the episode where they realized they were in a cartoon? How about the time a boomerang altered everyone's personalities? Ed, Ed, and Eddie somehow always found the perfect blend of symbolism and absurdity, making for a show that never got old to watch. The Eds themselves are a great trio to follow around. Their camaraderie is always entertaining, and each one brings something fresh to the table. The other characters are also a lot of fun. From Ralph to the Kanker sisters, each one feels distinct from the others. A storyline can only be entertaining if it has a good cast to bounce off of it, and this was something this show understood. Another big reason we place Ed, Ed, and Eddie so high is just because of its quality. Unlike some shows on this list, which saw the creators leave and the quality take a hit, Ed, Ed, and Eddie managed to keep the quality consistent. And for a whole decade, too. Even when the characters entered school, the show was just as entertaining as ever. It just goes to show you how malleable the series' premise was. No matter where you put them or what scam they came up with, Ed, Ed, and Eddie was 
always entertaining. Overall, we feel Ed, Ed and Eddie best represents this era of Cartoon Network. They weren't worried about looking clean or making merchandise, just letting creators craft the cartoons they wanted to make. The adventures of the Ed Boys feel the most true to that goal, and that is why we crown them the best Cartoon Network show of the 90s. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge more of our videos, but most importantly, stay wicked!